Hi, how to deal with your loved one's surgery when you have health issues yourself? Hi, I'm Amy Colgan Niemeyer, a life coach, a diva coach. Okay, first of all, get your rest, take naps. Get a support system set up to help you if you need anything during the before during and after the surgery make sure to do all the things that you're supposed to do for your health as well whether it's medication therapy sessions doctor's appointments anything do it because you're going to need to be strong for your loved one Pace yourself. Don't try to be the super caregiver. And maybe even see, maybe talk to the doctor to see what your loved one can and can't do. So you know that, okay, all right, I can do this for this person, but he or she can do that. Okay, I'll leave that to them. So you're not so um, overwhelmed with the caregiving duties. And take lessons from your own health issues and your medical experience, you know, uh, medical world experience. And say, okay, all right. Because say, I'm really comfortable in doctor's offices and hospitals because I've been in them all my life. And I know that they are a place where I'm going to be helped more often than not. And so it doesn't bother me to talk to doctors or be there. Um, so that's not gonna be the problem. So that, that can be something that you could think about if you've had health issues and you're okay with being in the hospital, you don't like it, but I mean, you're comfortable in it. You're not wondering at, whoa, what's that sound? Or, ooh, what are they gonna do now? You, you know, if you have a health, issue, a, a health issue, if you've got the medical history, you know some of these things, you know, what's gonna happen basically. And Use that to your advantage to help keep you calmer. Of course, you're gonna be nervous a bit, and so are they, so is your loved one. But you can use your experience to maybe calm those fears a little bit, both for yourself and for them. And stay informed. Talk to the doctor about what's going on and have your loved one do that as well. Keep, uh, you know, keep a uh, an eye on timing. You know, say, okay, they've been in there for X number of minutes, X number of hours, or however long and complicated the surgery might be, and ask at the desk. You know, to see, okay, how's how are things going, or have you heard anything? If you're wondering about it, be, be mindful of your feelings and try to allay any fears or doubts or worries by getting communication, you know, have, you know communicating with those around you, those uh, at the doctor's office, etc., cetera, uh, or the hospital. And... You know, get information from the people that really know what's going on. And let your loved one do what they can. Like I said, it's really important that they take responsibility for the things that they need, that they can do. Of course, there might be some things that are really hard for them to do. And then, yes, you can help them with those things. But... Put them in charge of the things that they can do. It'll be good for them and it'll also take some of the load off from you. 
And remember to take time for fun. Watch a funny movie or read your favorite book or just maybe, um, what else is fun? Playing games. Maybe you like to play games. Maybe you like video games, whatever it is. Do the things that you enjoy. Take time for those things. I know you're gonna be busy with your loved one, but you still need to find fun times, me times, to help you cope. And remember also that this doesn't last forever. It's not gonna last forever. Your loved one is going to heal and be back to being act more active and more on an even keel and maybe even better than they were before after this. But it'll just take time. They have to recover, they have to go through the surgery and then they have to recover. And it's gonna take a little bit of time. But after that, woohoo! You know I mean, you you made it through. That's something to celebrate. That's something that you can think about when you're going through the tough times. Of like, it'll be good again. Things will be good again. And caregiving can help you find perspective. See what your caregivers have sacrificed for you. And see the hard work that goes into being a caregiver. Makes you think. All those people that cared for you through all of your surgeries and therapies and all the things that you've had to deal with. Makes you respect them a little bit more, maybe. Maybe you think, oh, well, you don't understand me. Maybe you said that to somebody who was standing by you and waiting in the waiting room for you to get through surgery and worrying about you. And say, oh, you don't care. Oh, maybe they do. And now maybe you understand that that caregiving job is not an easy one. And you need to uh, think about those things while you are a caregiver. Saying, okay, all right, maybe I should thank those caregivers that helped me all those years. Because it is a tough job. But it's a job made of, done out of love and caring for that person. And make sure that they, they're appreciated for that. And think of this opportunity as giving you confidence, building your confidence. And that's, that's something that I've been thinking about with, because my husband's going in for surgery later in the week and I have been thinking, okay, driving. Especially with my ankle the way it is, it's my driving foot ankle, and it's been acting up. So I think, ooh, am I gonna be okay driving? Well, I've been practicing. And although people have been wonderful to offer rides to the doctor's office, where it's gonna be done, where the surgery's gonna be done, um, I decided to do it myself because the practicing has been going well. And I think, wow, what a confidence booster this, this will be if I, who has a bunch of health issues, can be there for my husband who is going through surgery. I will drive him home. He's driving there, but I will be driving him home. If I got somebody to take us home, then I think, mm, I could have done that. Instead, I'll be able to say, yep, I did it. And it's gonna be such a morale booster. And I appreciate so much the offers of ride, you know, for rides. But I think this is really um, 
an opportunity to grow and build my confidence, I'm going to take it. So you take that too. You take that opportunity to be there for your loved one and prove that you can do this. Build your confidence and make you feel pretty awesome all the way around. It's a great opportunity for that. So you, uh, you're going to be fine. And you can contact me anytime at amy at acnlifecoach.com for questions or input on this subject, you know, insights, your experiences. And I also want to let you know that this is my last YouTube video for a bit until probably the fall. There's all sorts of stuff going to be coming in the fall and later in the year. Uh, but right now I need to be there for Jim, my husband. And I might be having surgery as well. I'm going to be having tests after his surgery and recovery are done. So it's going to be a busy rest of the summer and fall. So um, we'll see what happens. But I welcome your emails. I welcome your messages. Just e email me, contact me anytime about my coaching, about this topic of being there for loved ones when you have chronic health issues as well. So uh, I'll catch you again in the fall and have a great rest of the summer. Have some fun and I hope everything goes well for those of you who have loved ones going through surgery or you're going through surgery yourself. I wish you all the best and you take care. And I'll catch you again in a month or so. Bye-bye.